Now let's talk about why it's so difficult to walk away from toxic, narcissistic parents and brothers and sisters and other siblings, aunts and uncles and cousins. Uh, let's also talk about why this could be the most important decision that you could make in your life. My name is Kevin and this is The Royal We. Now, when I take one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, I typically deal with one of two different issues. One issue would be narcissistic abuse within a romantic setting, marriage, boyfriend, girlfriend, and whatnot. But the more common issue that I typically help people through is dealing with toxic narcissistic parents, siblings, brothers, and sisters. And let's not pretend that narcissistic abuse does not exist in this dynamic. It has since the beginning of time, ever since Cain killed his own brother Abel, since Joseph's brothers threw him in a pit. And that's ancient Old Testament Bible stuff. Yes, narcissistic abuse exists in the home. If we're honest, our first exposure to any type of abuse or bullying was within the homes we were raised in. We witnessed it or experienced it through our parents, our brothers, our sisters, our aunts, our uncles, our cousins. So let's no longer pretend that narcissistic abuse doesn't exist in the home because it does. As a matter of fact, it begins there. It lives there. And right now, you and I are going to end it there. All right. Let's talk about some of the reasons why it's so difficult to make the decision to leave narcissistic parents and siblings. Number one would be the way in which we are connected in these this day in which we live. Social media has us so bound and imprisoned that even when we get away, we feel like we haven't gotten away. I mean, you flip up Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or Tweaker, Tweeter, whatever, TikToker, you flip it open and there's your siblings right there probably making some nasty passive aggressive jab towards you. And it's a constant reminder that you can't get away. So that's reason number one. And to that, I would say perhaps cut out social media, at least unfollow even some of your own siblings. It's for your own sanity and for your own good, right? The next reason is because of social pressures. We live in a society that has romanticized family dynamics. Even modern Western church has gotten on that train. Bring your grandma and your mom and your grandpa to church this week and remember them for Mother's Day and Father's Day and and and. Thou shall uh, honor your mom and dad all the days of your life. It, it almost makes it sound like there's supposed to be a unification with your parents. There never was. The only unification the Bible ever talks about is between you and a spouse. The role of your parents and siblings is a role of responsibility. That's it. And if they fail at that, oh well, they don't get another chance. I mean, that, that's just the way it is. So there's a lot of social pressures involved. Now, one of the reasons that you might feel afraid to walk away from toxic, narcissistic family members, and I hear this quite a bit, is because you don't want to be talked bad about. You're tired of being gossiped about. You're tired of being the bad person in the family. And typically, when I help people through this process, I, I challenge them. I say, well, listen, you've spent how many years trying to be a part of that family? 30 30 years I've been trying. You've gone all to the family functions and you've hung out with them. Yes. And did that ever stop them from saying bad things about you? No. Okay. So what is the difference if you walk away and never talk to them again? They're only going to do more of the same. It does not matter. When you are in a dysfunctional family, it doesn't matter if you hang out with them or if you don't or if you cut them out. They're going to talk bad about you no matter what because that's what dysfunctional families do. Why do they do this? Why did they choose you? Because of your failure to assimilate in the family. That's not a bad thing, by the way. That's a good thing. What it means is that with a dysfunctional family that likes to gossip and slander each other and lie and cheat and steal and whatever the hell else they do, you're the one that says, I don't like that. Oh, now you become a threat to them. Not only that, but you're gifted and you're talented and you want to go out into the world and you want to be special and you want to do great things. You're waiting for your family to say, yes, 
finally be blessed, go and do things that nobody in this family has done. Woo! Yes, they're not going to do that. I'll do that. I will tell you that because I'm rooting for you and I want you to go and do amazing things. Your family, your parents, your toxic brothers and sisters that live in a dysfunctional hierarchy, they're going to be resentful. They're going to hate you. They're going to look at you with envy, jealousy, and, and animosity saying, how dare you think you're better than us? How dare you get outside of the box of what this family has always been? So it's good. It's good that you have failed to assimilate into that gang, if you will, of a dysfunctional family, all right? So now, why then would you be afraid to cut yourself free once and for all of a toxic, dysfunctional family? The reason I believe is not because you're worried about what they would think about you, because you know it doesn't matter. You know they're gonna talk about you no matter what. The reason you're afraid is because you have never experienced yourself apart from them. You don't know who you are completely apart from them because you're enmeshed. You're still joined. So the reason to go no contact, the reason to separate yourself from toxic family is to discover yourself complete and full as an independent sovereign person away from the toxic family. But take this decision seriously because this means once you go, you don't go back to mommy and daddy and say, I need money. I'm broke. No, no, no. It means you go out there into the world, even if you have nothing, and you create something out of nothing and find out who you are as an independent individual. This is what our ancestors did back in the day when they left their families and moms and dads and came to the Americas to start something new. A lot of them came with nothing. It's not easy. It's rough. But they at least discovered who they were as sovereign individuals. You and I have that same calling. So if you're failing to assimilate into your gang of a dysfunctional family, just know that it's because you may have a calling outside of that. Even Jesus, when the people ran and said, hey, your mom and your brothers and your sisters, they, they want to talk to you. And Jesus' response was, who is my mom and my brother? He pointed to his disciples and he said, this is my mother, my brother, my sister. This is my family, my chosen family. You can have a chosen family. You don't have to stay with your parents, your toxic, dysfunctional siblings. You have the opportunity, but you have to know what that means. You have to be ready for it, and you have to want to know who you are apart from your attachment to mommy and daddy. It's a tough decision, but there's a lot there for you, and I'm rooting for you. Listen, I want to be a part of your healing journey. Down below, you can schedule one-on-one -on -one time with me, telephone call, FaceTime, WhatsApp, there's a direct link to my calendar down below. Also down below, you'll find access to Royal We live chat every Monday night and fellowship every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Central Time. Also follow me on Instagram at Join the Royal We, and I'll be back with more videos for you right here on the Royal We.